Welcome to Shorty Super Coach, and welcome back to my player profiles. Yes, it's not even December, I realise, but I'm pretty sure most diehard Super Coach fans are already thinking about a bit of footy and who might just be on their radar. So it is difficult to profile players so far out, and a little bit of it is guesswork because we haven't seen much at all in terms of the pre-season and won't see much for a little while in terms of exact positions and, and even prices for our great game. But I did want to get a bit of content flowing and over the next few weeks, um, just before we really get into it, I want to just talk about a few guys that are probably just have a little less that's going to be revealed. You know, we pretty much know everything we need to know. Um, so therefore we can profile them relatively accurately at this early stage. There'll be some guys that you really need to see the preseason and see a few things and what the coach is saying about them to make a good call. But I think at this point, we can still talk about a few. Having said that, I'm going to take a look at Lockie Whitfield off the top. Now, that sort of goes a little bit against the grain of what I was just saying, because really, we need to know his position. But I am finding it very difficult to see how he could be anything other than a midfielder and defender. So, And I think that makes him really juicy. So the only way that he could possibly not be picked as a defender is if champion data and that they really go about their whole tactic of trying to make Supercoach Classic as unique as possible and I know they have been hesitant at times of having these guys in the forward line or the back line that are just simply too good to refuse and every man and his dog has them therefore there's less and less players that can be different to other sites there have been the odd judgment call but surely Whitfield is going to be a defender which is going to be Extremely tasty for all us in fantasy land. Now, I want to do these player profiles a little bit more structured this year. I've waffled on a little bit early on this one as we do a bit of intro stuff. But generally speaking, I want to talk a bit about their stats, then what I like, what I don't like, and then give a bit of a verdict. And if I get excited, I might be able to timestamp when I start talking about those things. It might help people get to what they want to listen to. But... Let's get started in terms of a stats breakdown for Whitfield. Now, last year he averaged 99.9 from the 22 games. How many hundreds? 11. Not too bad at all, but 135 and 133 in the two finals. So they were big. He really played well in those big games. Scores of under 80, just the two, 64 and 61. Scores beyond the 115 mark, five and seven, including those two finals a high score of 141 he also had four scores in the 90s now that makes for really nice reading really consistent not too much below the 80 mark just a couple and he is capable of going a bit bigger you know 115 plus on five occasions seven including the two finals so that's pretty handy and we do enjoy that so what do I like about Whitfield well there's a lot to like and if you want to just take a look at some of his highlights it really does make it even more so I mean if you want to go and take a look at some of his class, you go on to the, uh, where was it? Uh, I was on YouTube somewhere. I think it was the best of uh, the Club Champion Award, the best of Lockie Whitfield Club Champion Series, something like that. The 10 second mark, just a beautiful gather, takes it, fends off, and dishes a handball in one motion. You go have a look. It's about the 10 second mark. Probably the first video that will pop up for Whitfield highlights, but it just showed really the qualities that he does possess. Now, He's got the class. He's played 114 games already. He's just flown to that mark. He's 24. He's in his prime. And we've seen him have solid scores almost his whole career. Even early on as a, a youngster, he was averaging in the 70s and the 80s. 2017 boosted that up to 97.6. And, of course, last year's average a touch under the ton. So there's plenty to like. Obviously, he's a former number one pick, so we know how talented he is. And... And look, it's worth discussing, he did go to the halfback flank, as we mentioned, he should be available as a defender. So that does help itself to more consistent scores, and, and you know, often you can get a little bit easier ball, and he's a nice kick, and that sort of thing. So he's going to use his scoring in a different manner. One would imagine with Zach Williams coming back, that Whitfield will go into the midfield, particularly with Shield leaving. So... That should surely equate because Whitfield generally, you know, he's a midfielder. Drafted as a midfielder, made his name as a young gun as a midfielder. So you would presume that last year 
could be a really, really nice thing for us in fantasy land because he could become available as a defender but play through the midfield, and we love that. That's what we want. That's what we want in the defence and the forward line. So I think with those two changes to GWS's lineup, it makes it pretty hard to see him not playing through the middle, and I really like that. I know he's had his highest averaging season as a defender, but probably to this point in his career, He's never really been talked about in fantasy land because he has just been a pure midfielder. There's so many giants that are running through that midfield that are guns. You know, he's not quite at the very top with a few of the others, Canelio, Kelly, Ward back in the day. So he's never been fully considered. But if he's available as a defender, you've absolutely got to consider him and more or less lock him in. So there's plenty to like. The fact that he'll be in his prime, in, in the midfield, in a quality team, he oozes class, he's a nice kick. It's hard to see why we wouldn't pick him if he is available as a defender. What don't I like? Well, you can probably gather there's not much. And really, there isn't much point in me trying to find something I don't like because the fact is, and this leads straight into the verdict, if he is a defender, you lock him into your side. There's no doubt about that. The fact is, he's not going to be too pricey because we're going to have Jake Lloyd, who's going to be right up there. Um, I can't think of any others, but look, Lloyd will be super expensive. You know, the likes of Doherty in previous seasons. Paying big-time coin for defenders can provide a headache, where Whitfield, all going to plan, should be just a, a reasonably priced premium. You know, he'll be the upper echelon of prices for a defender, but I think it's very warranted. I'm pretty confident that he will find himself averaging three figures next season. So I think we can safely say that, working into his prime, great position, highly touted for many years. And he really hasn't got the credit for how well he's done as a number one pick. I think they often cop a lot of criticism, number one selections, if they don't quite perform. But when they do, we, we just sort of say, oh, they're going well, tracking well. But he's been outstanding, I think, and probably flown under the radar, given he has been up there in Sydney. So potentially we haven't given him the acknowledgement he deserves. But I think he's a very, very likable selection. The sort of guy that I think in future years will definitely consider as a midfielder. But to this point in his career, he hasn't been in the discussion. He certainly is now. It's hard to see him not being available as a defender. So he should certainly be on your radar and definitely locked in at this early stage as a must-have. So I'll be back very shortly for another player profile. Hopefully you got around this one in the early stage. I had to dust off the cobwebs just to get back into this. I thought, gee, this is a bit different. I haven't done this for a while, but I appreciate you tuning in. And I will be back. I'll be looking to churn them out, um, you know, fairly regularly, hopefully four to five a week. I know when we get right in the thick of it through uh, February and March and that sort of thing, I know I was pumping out seven to eight videos um, a week. It was certainly flat chat. But I think at this early stage, there's probably no need for any more than four or five as we go through some of your more um, obvious selections and just some guys that, you know, a fair bit of clarity around what we're going to see through 2019. So thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you've stuck around from last season. Subscribe away, ring this bell that they talk about, and I'll chat to you soon. Cheers.